Okay, well, my name is Melissa Barnard, and my friends call me Missy. And at the time of the campfire, I lived here. I'm originally from Chicago, uh, but we moved here in 2003. And so I'm a California girl now, I suppose. We moved here from Chicago because we had three sons, basically ages four and under. And when it was 30 below in the winter and I had these three babies, I thought, what the heck are we doing here? We have to move to where there's better weather and where there's more trees than people. So how we found paradise is more of a long story, but we moved here and um, I began working at Feather River Hospital. My husband was stay-at-home dad with the kids, and they had a beautiful childhood growing up here. Lots of outdoor activities, um, soccer and swim team, and just, you know, the kids loved growing up here. I loved being outside more than when I lived in Chicago. I love growing up in Chicago, but the summers are brutal, the winters are brutal, the crime gets old, and you're always on this state of awareness. And living here where it's safe and quiet was just beautiful. And we'd wake up Saturday morning and there would be no sound. And the windows would be open and we'd be like, oh my God, do you hear that? It's nothing, <laughs> not people mowing their lawns because there's no lawn. So I just really enjoyed living here for the, men, for the 15 years that we lived here because it's so beautiful and very close to many music festivals, driving distance to High Sierra Music Festival and some other music festivals and camping and things like that, which we really like doing and hiking and rivers and things like that. So right after the fire, the day of the fire, I turned to my husband and said, well, I guess we should move to Mexico because in my heart, that's always been my plan, <laughs> my escape plan. But um, we had three sons, two, uh, one in high school. We still have three sons, but at the day, the day of the fire, one was in high school and one was at Butte and one was about to go to Butte or Shasta. And so we thought that we should rebuild because we because our kids were still in school and the other thought is where else are we supposed to go um, we our tribe our people are here and our community is here and so we could move to maybe what might have been perceived as a safer place uh, if we could afford it but if our people aren't there what's the point so now I feel like, you know, now almost two years later, why are we rebuilding here? You know, that's, and now we're in totally different headspace. Again, where else are we supposed to go? Because there's hurricanes, there's tornadoes, there's earthquakes. And um, I think that our property is pretty fire safe and the way that we're building is fire safe. And so um, we're not going to succumb to fire again. And again, our, our people are still here and even though not by the time we finish our house, we'll only have one of our sons at home anymore. Um, my mom is here in town and our people are here and <clears throat> I'm on a couple of different boards and I'm not insider information, but I'm, I'm intimately aware of the, 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 the resources, financial and uh, people resources are going into rebuilding this town. And I think it's really cool. I think that this town is gonna be a very um, hot spot, cool place to move. It's, it's, it's purposeful. It will never be the way it was before, which is fine. I'm, I'm a forward moving person. I never look back and things are always changing and growing and becoming different. And I like that. Um, I'm a leader type person. I always take people into the unknown. And um, I did that when I was a, the director of the emergency department at Feather River Hospital for the last 12 years. And I feel like the house that we're building also shows that too. Like, let's, get, let's take it to the next level and helping forge the future. And I'm gonna be part of that as we rebuild paradise. So rebuilding, um, I am owner builder for this property and it's extremely challenging. I went into it thinking, well, since I don't have a job, I'll be owner builder and I'll pay myself and that will be my job. And if I can run an emergency department, I can build a house. Well. For me, the, I knew what I was doing in the emergency room, and I don't know what I'm doing in rebuilding a house. So personally, it's been extremely challenging 
navigating the way through all the steps. I was uh, kind of ahead of the curve. And so even though the town had all these checklists and things like that, I was already kind of beyond that. And so it's just the, the unknown is challenging psychologically. Um, the multiple, multiple steps and then there's changes and it's just the whole process is personally challenging. Um, as far as rebuilding the town, I think one of the biggest challenges is that people think that it's going to go back to something that it was before, which it's not. And, you know, pulling those people along and saying, here's something new. And um, I've been a leader and I know that there are people who are extremely re resistant to change and want things to stay the way they are or the way they were. And those people can be very vocal and unhappy and they kind of drag everybody else down um, and t carrying them along with loving compassion is the best way to do it and just showing you know just showing and then finding people who are who are you know like okay let's do this and, and focusing on them too no i was i was the first i actually paid to get my lot privately cleaned up because I didn't know how long it would take and what kind of a job they would do. And I'm like, forget that, I'm not waiting. I'm, I'm gonna be the first one in the town to rebuild. And so I paid to get my lot cleared. I got a temporary electrical pole before anybody else. And then it turns out, and I spent almost $3,000 and then barely even used it. And now pg and is putting them up free for people. So I was just really right on top of it. I also had a friend who um, started the design job with me. He actually designed the emergency department where I used to work, and um, and he said, "Let me help you get going on a design." And so we were we started in January with the rebuild, um, as far as design goes, clean up and things like that. So I um, I'm as you can, I'm a go getter, and I found out I, I was seeking out information before the information was available, and resourceful like that. I know it's a hard decision, and. When, when we weren't sure what to do right away, a friend of mine said, you just keep throwing poop at the wall and see what sticks. And because you have to move forward, otherwise you're sitting there um, in this really confused limbo space. And so we have continued to move forward, move forward, move forward. Um, that's my nature. Um, but I do have friends who have really kind of gotten stuck in this in this quagmire of what do I do, what do I do? And, and when you don't move forward, then you stay and go round and round. So I, I understand that that happens. And um, you know, there's a certain point at which people need to decide. <laughs> um, but the pros of living here is that, number one, I think it's more fire safe than any other place in California because all of, most of the um, fuel is gone. And I look forward to insurance companies honoring that fact and giving us a discount on insurance. Um, we're in the beginning of something really new. And so moving to any other place, you know, is it a town? Is there a sense of community? You know, do you have any roots there? And for the people who lived here before, we have roots here. We have people we know here. And it's that sense of community that's so important for where people live. And Again, it's, it's going to look different. We're never going back to anything how it used to be, but it's the beginning of something progressive and new with this cool small town feeling. And, you know, where, where else? Where, where else do you want to go? It's kind of a no-brainer.